um, my name is Amelia and Elle has asked me to pop on and chat with you today um, just about your this the latest chapter in your walk or the latest section of your walk um, which means I'm reading from Ephesians um, chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 and I'm not going to lie to you when I read this chapter there was a little bit of me that sort of wondered why Elle had bestowed it upon me as um, you know we're not perfect uh, and I'm not sure I always honour my mother and father and actually there's a story that um, I'm going to tell to you because I think I think it's a good one. So my um, mum and dad are still very present in my life and I'm really lucky that they have been an excellent influence and I guess I just want to put a little pre-warning in that if that's not true for you that doesn't mean that this little bit of scripture isn't relevant to you and isn't relevant to the way you live your life and it might be that you don't have children and it might be that your parents um, aren't with you or the relationship is just really tricky and I want you to know that God is a good father and at the end of the day that's the most important thing to remember he loves you and he loves to pour your love his love upon you so this story is about my mother and I in all my life have only told my mum that I hate her once which is an interesting story because basically here it goes I came downstairs, I told my mum that I felt ill, she told me she didn't believe me, it escalated to a point at which she was like, I don't believe you, you're going to school, at which point I was like, I hate you, and then stormed upstairs. The final warning was my mum shouting up the stairs, fine, you're going to the doctors, and I went to the doctors, and I had a chest infection, they gave me two weeks off school, and I never remind my mum of that, all the time. I remind her all the time. But that's, you know, the silly example of when honouring my mother and father was um, perhaps tricky. Um, and I know that often it is. We don't see things the way that other people see things. Whether it's a mother-daughter relationship, whether it's a, fr a relationship in church, which is ultimately the big family of God. And this passage, uh, on reflecting on, I realised that actually there are a lot of relationships in church that are like parents and children. I can name many people from um, my church, which, or my home church, which was St Mary's. I'm still the kids and youth worker there. I'm sure you will have seen it if you're from Overton. Um, and I'm sure that if you're part of the congregation, hopefully there will have been an altogether service that you will have been a part of. But I can tell you that in that church, there are many people who I would consider second mums, second dads, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. Um, and there are kids there that I have loved, hopefully, as a mother would have loved their kids during the time that I was looking after them. And I just want to say that that's what I believe the church is. I believe the church is a family where there are many relationships, many wonderful things. And I guess previously um, in our study we would have been speaking about wives and husbands. And although that's a little bit of a tricky relationship to compare the church to, mums, dads and kids seems easier. And I also know that um, God's desire is to see family done well. And in that, I don't want you to hear that um, God requires everyone to have, you know, husband, wife, 2.3 kids and, you know, pet dog and a white picket fence. I don't think that that's true. I think that throughout scripture, family is spoken about in a really good way. And relationships, and singleness or marriage are also spoken about in a really good way. And ultimately, again, the real family of God is his church. And in 1 John it says um, that we love because he first loved us. I wonder whether you think about your church and you think about the relationships you have there, whether or not you think that church is done well there, that love is done well there, that family is done well. I wonder whether after this session, after this little moment, it might be good to have a little think about whether or not there are areas that you can improve, areas that you can grow in love, in those relationships that you have in church. I have my notes here, in case you just thought I was looking at the floor randomly. In Proverbs, it says, children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. And I really believe that church can be a place where children, no matter what age, are loved, 
where the aged, no matter what age, <laughs> are loved, where generations communicate well with each other, where generations love each other well. So I have three quick questions to ask you in light of this, in light of understanding that God's desire is to see family done well, a place where children are loved and where fathers teach, where mothers teach. So, just for 10 seconds, I wonder whether you'd let the Holy Spirit talk to you and remind you of skills that you have, of special features that you have, of good things that you have in your life. Just have a little think now. And next, I wonder whether you can have a little think about something you want to learn. And that could be that you really want to learn to play piano well. I know that there are some excellent pianists in your congregation. It could be that you want to learn to be more patient. And there's someone in church who you're like, actually, they really have that skill. It could be that you want to unicycle. I don't know whether anyone in church does that. But, you know, you could ask to be tall. And, and I just guess. Have a little think about what you would like to learn and what you can learn from somebody in your big church family. Yeah, just have a think again. And finally, I'd love to ask you what you think you can teach. I know that often there are certain skills in our lives that we have that um, we might not be able to highlight. It might be that somebody really loves to pray and the way that they pray is in silence an hour in the morning. How incredible is that? Why don't, you, why don't you try and teach someone else to be that well? Why don't you inspire others? It might be that you really love to sing and you've noticed that someone has the beginnings of a talent. Why don't you take an opportunity to teach? Ultimately, we read in Ephesians, in this particular verse, that God wants us to do these things so that we can have a good life. How about, as a church family, we encourage each other to live the best lives we can by loving multiple generations and by teaching and learning as Jesus taught and led. Guys, it's been wonderful hanging out with you. It's been wonderful speaking to you, whether it's morning, evening or um, afternoon, and I shall see you soon. Bye, guys.